There are brief shining moments of Mercito Hesta where I really like what I see. Yeah. And then there are moments where he lingers, oh. and he just oh. found one of those oh. moments there where you oh. got to love what you see as he looks to close the show. Wow. What an offensive explosion from the Filipino. Six, seven, eight, nine. You okay? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Can he finish him? Big right hand. He goes down at the bell. You cannot be saved off the bell. He needs to rise up and beat the count. Six, seven, eight, nine. Fight's over. Fight is over. Fight is over. Jay Nady reacting as Duke Buchanan was trying to enter the ring. What's going on, y'all? Dante562. You know, today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Mercito Jesta. You know, I want to give um, my little prospect report or scout report, if you will. You know, I've been watching uh, Mercedo Jester for um, quite some time, you know, ever since this fight started to um, air out here in the States. You know, I was and I was pretty impressed. You know, he uh, some, you know, he somewhat emulates Manny Pacquiao. But at the same time, you can see him doing a little Floyd Mayweather in there with the Philly shell, you know, you know, power, speed, nice counter punching ability, you know. I was really um, liking this fighter, right? But, um, you know, before I even go further, let me just make this clear. You know, to the people who watch my videos and um, you see me criticizing, you know, one of your favorite fighters, you know, please understand that this, this shit is not personal, okay? This shit is not personal. It, you know, it has nothing to do with me hating the guy, loving the guy. It has nothing to do with that. All I'm doing is I'm trying to break down their strengths and their weaknesses. You know, that's all I'm basically doing. And for those of you who already follow my videos, you already know my model. And you're going to hear me say this a lot because there's always new people watching, you know, my videos. You know, defense is your most important attribute as far as I'm concerned. Your defense has to be better than your offense. You know, defense can tell you a lot about a fighter. You know, a lot of times it can tell you how far they can go in the sport. Lack of defense, you know, can tell you if this fighter is overrated, you know, and it can give you an indication when he is being exposed. All right. So, you know, and I and I gave I gave you guys an example in my top five um, series that I did. You know, I told you guys how I watched, you know, certain fighters. You know, like Fernando Vargas, you know, in his eighth fight, you know, when nobody else noticed it, I watched him fight a guy who was a, a complete tomato can on a, on a pay-per-view undercard. This guy had about six to eight losses, and this guy was outboxing the hell out of um, Fernando Vargas, right? Fernando Vargas eventually came back, and he knocked the guy out. And usually, to casual fans, this is all they remember is how the fight ended. They don't remember what happened throughout the fight. It's It's that all is forgiven type of syndrome. You feel me? So um, with me getting that out the way, let me get back into uh, Mercedo Jester. Okay. Now Mercedo Jester, he just had a fight, you know, about um, a week ago um, against Ty Barnett. And um, in that fight, you know, as like I said, as much as I like Mercedo Jester, you know, the majority of people, the reason why I showed you at the beginning of this um, video I showed you a clip of how that fight ended. I did that because this is usually, like I just said, what people, all that people remember. You know, all is usually forgiven. But see, that would mislead you to thinking sometimes a fighter is better than he really is. Okay. Now, like I said, in this fight, at the end, Mercedo Jester, he delivered. But if you rewind the fight and you go back and you look at all of the other stuff that happened through the fight, you see Mercedo Jesta get wobbled. You see Mercedo, you see, you see Jesta, you know, he seems unsure of himself at certain times in this fight. You know, he's very inconsistent in this fight. Missing a lot of punches. The fight, the fight, look, if you didn't know the record of these fighters. You would have thought, going, leading up to the knockout, you would have thought 
that both of these fighters were prospects. You would have thought both of these fighters were up and coming, top rank, golden, golden boy, the money team now. You would have thought they were promoted. You know, they had high promotions, and this was a pick em type fight, right? And see, the thing is, it wasn't supposed to look like that, okay? It wasn't supposed to look like that. You know, the truth of the matter is, Jester is in a ring with a tomato can, okay? He's in there with a guy who was, who was just coming off of two knockout losses, you know? This guy was not supposed to be on Jester's level, all right? And like I said, this guy is fighting uh, Mercedo Jester tooth and nail, you know? The fight looks more like Ali Frazier than it looks like Adrian Broner versus Vicente Escobedo, okay? And keep in mind, see, people, they, a lot of people, they want to have it both ways. They want to, you know, they want to hate on a certain fighter, you know, by basically, like, you take Broner, for instance, you know, while I'm talking about this, because I'm going to bring up Broner as well, because Mercedo Jester, he called Broner out. But see, Broner, you know, you have some people say, oh, you know, Broner, he ain't fought nobody. He ain't fought nobody. But you look at who Mercedo Jessa just fought. He fought Ty Burnett, right? And you look at who Broner fought. Now, now there is no comparison, okay? If anyone knows anything about boxing, you know that Vicente Escobedo is way better competition than Ty Barnett, okay? Even Eloy Perez, you know what I'm saying? Even Ponce de Leon, which wasn't Broner's best performance. But if you look at those three opponents, you know what I'm saying? And you put them up, even, even Jason Litzow. Jason Litzow is another good opponent. You put these opponents up against Ty Barnett, they're, you know, it, you, you can't compare the two. They're not in the same league. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because Broner's fighting better competition, and Broner, he looked completely impressive in those fights. He made, he made the fight look so easy that you thought he was in there with a complete tomato can, and he wasn't in there with a tomato can. He wasn't in there with a world beater either, but he wasn't in there with a tomato can. The fighter that Mercedo Jester is fighting is a tomato can, okay? And he gave Jester all types of problems. Like I said, man, I really like Mercedo Jester, but I have to be honest, okay? I have to be honest. And then on top of that, he's calling out Adrian Broner, which I think, which I think that would be an excellent fight. You know, I, I think that would be an excellent fight. You know, but like I said, you know my motto. Defense, that's what I base everything off of, guys. I base everything off of defense. And if you look at the history of this sport, you know what I'm saying? Those fights corroborate with exactly with the point I'm making. At least 90% of all fights, the, the winner was the guy who had the better defense. You know what I'm saying? So, so this is the reason why I'm very high on defense. Okay? But I'm um, getting that out the way. Like I said, you know, Mercedo Jesta, um, I thought he was very impressive at the beginning, you know, of his career. I feel that um, he was exposed in his last fight. Matter of fact, he was actually um, exposed two fights ago against Manuel Perez as well. Um, the performance, um, it looked uh, kind of similar to this. Only difference was Ty, Ty Burnett. He did a lot more damage. Than um than Manuel Perez did, and the man Perez and in, in, in that fight it was another competitive fight that should not have been competitive. It should have been one sided, but it was a back and forth fight, right? And like I said, I don't know what it is about Mercedo Jesta, but there are just sometimes when he fights, there are spurts in the fight where he just doesn't look sure of himself. You know, he'll be he'll be you know he'll be pulling off a, a great you know performance, but then all of a sudden he'll just take his foot off the gas. And he'll stop fighting for like rounds at a time or he'll go like a minute, two minutes, you know, and, you know, and he's just not fighting anymore. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I felt he was um, definitely exposed 
prior to this Barnett fight. But nevertheless, you know, um, I give him credit for calling out Adrian Broner. You know, I mean, that's more than I can say about um, Donaire. You know, he's calling out one of the best prospects that's on his level. And I think that would be an excellent fight. You know, um, like I said, once again, I base everything off defense. You know, so it, it's kind of hard. It's going to be an uphill battle as far as I'm concerned if he were to fight somebody like Broner because, you know, he doesn't have the greatest defense from watching this Ty Barnett fight. He was getting caught, you know, pretty damn frequently in this fight, you know. And um, as far as Broner goes, you know, Broner has called out some big-name fighters, but um, a lot of them put the apart. They're going to be unavailable for his very next fight, you know. So I think he should fight Mercedo Jesta or someone like that. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, even though I told you Broner has been fighting better competition, you know, if he doesn't fight someone at least as good as Jesta, you know, I'm going to be talking shit about him as well after his next fight, okay? Because, um, you know, if Broner is going to sit here and say, you know, no matter who I get in the ring with, it's going to look the same, then, hey, you got to show me, dog. You got to get in there and you got to show me that when you step up in competition, you know, it is going to look the same. You feel me? I think this will be a, a, an excellent fight. This fight needs to be made if there is no one else available that it is least that it's at least on this level as Jesta or better. Okay? He, like I said, uh, you know, I got to give both people I'm going to give both fighters props when it comes to that. You know, um Jesta, he's re he's ready to step up and and Broner, he's been calling out fighters that are pound for pound the best in the world like, you know, Juan Marquez, DeMarco is is um is Ring Magazine's number one lightweight contender. You know, and um, Brandon Rios, you know, is a is a natural, you know, big ass, heavy, undefeated puncher. You know, so, you know, um, back to um, just to, to go ahead before um, I end this video and give my my quick thoughts, because like I said, this is a, a scouting report. I believe that uh, Jesta is very talented. You know, I believe he definitely will be a champion. You know. I don't know if he's going to crack the top 10. Matter of fact, I don't even believe he'll crack the top 10 just because what I've been seeing in his last couple of fights. You know, fun fighter to watch. When he lets his hands go, he looks very impressive. Who knows? Maybe he'll get over whatever type of anxiety or whatever it is that he's having. But who knows? Maybe he'll get over it. Maybe he won't. We don't know. So, um, yeah, man, that's uh, my scout report on uh, Marcito Jesta. And um, I'll catch up with you guys on the next one. I'm on to the next one. Holla. At 135 pounds, and I've heard mixed feelings about his future. Some boxing insiders saying I really like him. Some saying I wish I was more consistent. I know fans will say if he's going to do stuff like that, I want to watch him. Where do you see him down the road? What do you think of Hesta long term? I think long term he's going to be all right. Like I said, he has great ring generalship. So he moves around the ring very well. He knows how to get in there and get that left hand and the right hook off. But the thing that I see him not doing is being consistent through the whole through the whole fight or through the whole round. Um, he waits till the last part of the round. He kind of you know he kind of does the veteran thing where he's saving his energy for the last part. He needs to be more consistent because there's going to be a guy in there that's going to be consistent with him.